So the Washington Commanders started the 2024 season with an L. Let's talk about it. After the game, it's the aftermath. When I lose, we still wave our commander's flag. Riding with Wentz, under center, making the pass. Jahan Dotson, young rookie, making a splash. The burgundy and gold, that's what we about. Jonathan Allen knocking QB to the ground. We die hard and nobody can shut us down. Cause this is the greatest show in town. Let's go. Go, 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 go. All right, so the Washington Commander started off this season with the L. Now, do want to go over a couple of things because I don't think that we going to look at this game as in its whole its entirety. Now, the defense, because that's what I'm going to start with first, is the defense. The defense, to me, with all the new pieces, with all the the, the things that we have brought in, it's still the same. Nothing changed. We still don't have great cornerback play. We still getting burnt. Um, Mike Evans, Chris Garvin was torching our defense up. Our Rasheed White was running up the middle on us. We didn't have a game that we looked like we was competitive. Yeah, there was some times that we made stops here and there, but we allowed Baker Mayfield to win off on us. Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield threw for almost 300 yards, 229. He had three, he had four touchdowns, and he only was sacked one time. Baker Mayfield could have been sacked at least five times in this game. Every time we got pressure up the middle on him, and Baker Mayfield is not the fastest quarterback, but we still continue to allow Baker Mayfield to escape the pocket and make throws. We couldn't get off the field on third down. We can't give a third down. Um, making uh, allowing them to make third down conversions, something that we continue to always have trouble with from last year to the year before. Now people are losing their mind, saying, "Hey, the the ownership is the same as the last. The coaching is still is the same as the last." I get it. The results we'll be looking for is a win, but at the same time. Dan Quinn has been dealt the hand he was given. Yeah, he has tried to do everything he has to rewrite this roster. Can can he, you know, make some minor changes as the season goes? On? Yes. I mean, they do have the Giants the next game, then Cincinnati. Two two teams I feel like they could they should win, especially the Giants game. But then you allow um, Irvin to run for 62 yards in the game. Chris Garvin had 83 yards. Rasheed White has 75 yards. Mike Evans has 61 yards and two touchdowns. McMillan had a bomb for a touchdown. Benjamin St. Jews got burnt on two touchdowns. Manuel Ford is getting burnt. The, the secondary is bad. I get, I get that Derek Forrest didn't play today, but at the same time, at the end of the day, you didn't have Derek Forrest, you didn't have Dominic Hampton, you didn't have Chris Paul, who was out, um, Noah Brown that was inactive, which I would love to see him play next week because we didn't even get no nothing from the offense uh, besides Brian Robinson, Austin Eckler, and Jaden Daniels with they running and catching if you look at if you if you look at um the commander's statistical um, stats Jaden Daniels only threw he was 17 for 24 he only threw for 184 yards he only, he was sacked twice in the game um but he had a 91 passing rating he ran for 100, I mean, he ran for 88 yards. He almost ran for 100 yards in the game. Um, Brian Robinson only had 40 yards. Austin Eckler only had 10 yards. Austin Eckler was the leading pass catcher of the team. He had 52 yards receiving. 
and he was targeted four times, and all he made all four of his receptions. Brian Robinson was targeted four times. He made three receptions. He had 50, 49 yards receiving. Zach Ertz had 28 yards. Um, McCafferty only had 18 yards. McLaurin, two catches for 17 yards. Where is we getting? There is no De'Ami Brown on here. There is no other other receiver on here. The kicking game still is atrocious. He missed two field goals, two field goals today. That could have gave the team 26 points right there. Yeah, we put 20 points on the board, but I'm saying we're not going to be able to rely on if the defense can't stop people. It don't matter what the offense do because guess what? Teams going to start getting accustomed. They're going to get tape on Jaden Daniels. They're going to say, okay, well, let's play him like we play Lamar. They like to run. They can't pass the ball. Now you're going to make him pass. But he can pass. But if you don't scheme your receivers open to get them or the offensive line doesn't hold up long enough to allow Jaden Daniels to find the receivers, then we back in the same position we was last year. There's nothing to desire for this team this first game of the season. Like I said, the only bright spot of this was Brian Robinson, Austin Eckler, and Jaden Daniels. That's it. Everything else is bad. The kicking was bad. The special teams was bad. The defense was bad. Don't know where Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne at. Deron Payne did have a sack, but he didn't execute it on it. Um, Bobby Wagner. I mean... Nowhere to be found. He had five solar tackles. Janjavius Martin, he had eight tackles by himself. Stansfield had five. And this and all the defensive backs was playing out of position. It's like they were scrambling around. They was they were scrambling around somewhere. Frankie Louville, he did got nicked up a little bit. Emmanuel Forbes, he needs to be benched. He needs to be benched. He's hold, clearly you see him holding. You see him, he's actually holding the guy. Jamie Davis, you know, he had a tackle for a loss, but Jeremy Chen, Percy Butler, Jonathan Allen, two tackles. I didn't even know for Darren Mathis played. Deron Payne, one tackle. This defensive unit going to have to get it together. I mean, to all to give your offense a chance to have better field position, to be able to move down the field effectively, the defense has to stop somebody. Looking at the Giants, you know, guess what? You know... Daniel Jones likes to he likes to run against us. He likes to run. And if you think Baker Mayfield escaped us and got and and, and, and ran for some yards, how many rushing yards Baker Mayfield had this game? Baker Mayfield had 21 yards rushing on three carries, and his average was 11 yards. So you're giving up 21 yards rushing to a guy that really doesn't run. So imagine what Daniel Jones is is going to do when they play us. He's going to run out the pocket. And we scrambling around. We Nobody's in position. Bobby Wagner's supposed to be the mic guy. He's supposed to be the captain. He's supposed to be able to put those guys in position. I know it's one game. And to be honest with you, I understand it. I know it's one game. But this, this one game feels like it could be something that takes a toll on this team all the way down to the season. And, and I mean, and, and it's crazy that we open a three-point favorite against the Giants. Unbelievable. But now they did ask Jada Daniels um, after the game about the cheat shot to the head. 
And he said, no, not at all. I mean, I play football, so maybe some of the other people might look at it like that. No, but it's not that. And it was talking about because a couple of times his helmet has popped off. John Klein also talked to Zach Ernst. He said, I'm not sure a lot of people are down on us after this game, but I don't think anyone is panicking. The only thing this means is we are not going undefeated. He said the 72 Dolphins are safe from from us. We just keep on getting better. And that's what the team needs to do. They need to continue to get better because it's bad. Now, Nikki Javala also for the New York Times, she also has something from cornerback Benjamin St. Jude. And, and it, it was like, it's optimistic because we were always in the game and we kind of beat ourselves. You think because you play piss poor, you giving up touchdowns. I think what well, you gave two up two to Mike Evans, to Mike Evans. Now, I, Mike Evans is not to sneeze at, to be honest with you, but is what it is. He said, um, "We beat ourselves with not great transitioning, um, great communication that we had throughout training camp." That. In that game, sometimes things like that can happen where you in the game and you so locked in and wanting to make a play that we forget that we need communicate. Uh, we need to communicate. We got beat on a rub route. We eliminate that if we were communicating and that one touchdown away. Obviously, Forrest mentioned he would have played a different technique on that play where he was penalized twice, could have taken some points away. But see, this is the thing. Y'all talking about what y'all should have, would have, could do in the game, but y'all didn't do it. This is where your defensive coordinator need to sit y'all down and say, hey, guys, y'all need to communicate. We need to stop giving up these third downs. Every time it seemed like the, the Washington could make a stop, they gave up a third down play. He said, I could be more focused on smaller details going against. That's 21 points right there. I never felt like we could match up with the guys. It's always like that. My thing is this, I, I don't even care what they talking about right now because they gave everything up. So, and, and, and just to you know, continue to sit there and look at this game and everything like that. Now, Dan Quinn did talk the, talk after the game, so I'm going to let y'all listen to what he had to say. This is where tonight is uh, missed opportunities. You know, third down, you know, if I had to look back on right now, that, that was the biggest thing, you know, from the story of the game. So, a lot to work on, and uh, came for a better team today. You need to struggle to see the identity develop. You don't want what you need. And it's uh, got a lot of lessons to take away tonight. No. He said the main thing is third downs. Okay. Let's see if they could correct that. Let's see if they could communicate and correct everything in this game. Because from what I was looking at this game, yeah, you score two. Like, to be honest, Washington could have had, they could have had points if they had stopped the Buccaneers on third down. But the, the more you can't stop somebody, the more you allow somebody to continue to keep their drive alive, tired out your defense. Because if you look at it in the fourth quarter, the defense was tired. Then he started gashing them for, you know, good runs. And that happens. It happens in every game. But the secondary has to get better. The offensive line needs to be a little bit better, especially in pass protection. The good thing that we do have a quarterback that does not sit back there all day. If it if nothing's is if nothing's there, he could take off and get some yardage. And that's the positive the bright spot of that. But we still need to develop a running game as well, because we don't want Jaden Daniels to be the the main runner 
in the game. We need to find ways to get the wide receivers open a little bit more. You know, Clansbury, that's your specialty. You can't just have these single man coverages. You're going to have to mix and move people around. Why not move Tabry around a little bit to get him freed up? That would have helped out a little bit more. You could have put Ben Sanat in the game as another tight end, as another weapon, you know, along with Zach Kurtz. There's a lot of things that this team could have done in this game to put to keep the Buccaneers off. You know, Gray um, uh, Todd Balls, he loves the blitz. And he was sending people at Jada Daniels, you know. And, and the good thing about this, you don't have a Carson Wentz, you don't have a, a Fitzpatrick, you don't have a um, Sam Howell sitting back there and just taking sacks, you know, to constantly take a sacks. You got to, like I said, you have a quarterback that could recognize it and get out of the pocket quicker, not being, not taking so much sacks and not turning the ball over, even though he almost lost a fumble because he got stripped from behind. But we got it back. So, do, do the, doing the positives that I take away from this offense. Can this offense get better? Yeah. I would like to see Noah Brown play. I would see more of De'Ami Brown, you know. So there's a lot. I, I, I want to see the running game more. There was some efforts there early in the game, but I want to see more. I want the defense to stop playing collectively, you know, stop giving up big plays. You know, Stephon Gilmore is out there. If you go into a game and you're giving up big plays, you need to put you need to go out in there and get a guy that still has something to shut down, you know, shut teams down. So I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this game. Right now, um I'm not too high, not too low on the game. It's the first game of the season, but I do see some stuff that has not changed from last year and they need to be changed going forward because if not, this team could be in a world of hurt in five games. They got to have some kind of rhythm within five games. They got to have some kind of winning record. If you think about it, they got the Giants, Bengals, Cardinals, Browns, and Ravens, Panthers, and the Bears. So... Bengals, Browns, Ravens made the playoffs last year. Those tough games. If you could manage to come out of that game, so you already out. But you already played one playoff team, so you got that loss. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You got nine games before you play the Steelers. Nine games. If you could go say you could go five and four in that stretch. That's that's something. I mean, six and three will be a a a, 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 a mile improvement. But if you go five and four, you can easily take that any day of the week. But you're gonna have to, you know, like I said, this first the first game. If I don't see any changes in the second game, then it's going to be um, something that needs to be worked on. But again. Let me know what you think about this game. What flaws, um, what problems do you still see? Like I said, I don't see anything with the quarterback position. I think Jaden Daniels played. He played well for the circumstances that he was given. But everybody else still needs to step up. That's just me. Until then, this is your boy, Live Watch Sports Media. And you know what I always say about at the end of my video. You know what it is. Hey, so amazing, amazing. Uh, you see how they playing, uh, live wire, it's all about sports and entertainment, uh, you don't want to miss it, so official like you never seen, keep it going till the whistle blowing from the referee, uh, everything from highlights and stats, you know that we gotta run it back, whether on the field or the court, you know that this is where it's at, uh, subscribe, no delaying, uh, this is live wire, uh, sports and entertainment, let's go. Hey.